A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than any other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than anyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? The gardener said to him in reply, sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. For the ground on which you stand is holy ground. I never really understood the import of that particular phrase until I spent time in Sri Lanka, which is where I got these vestments. A lot of my time in Sri Lanka was spent visiting some of the old ruins of the ancient cities in Sri Lanka. And in every ancient city was a Hindu or a Buddhist temple. And I also got the opportunity and the privilege to visit some of the modern Hindu and Buddhist temples. And whenever you enter a Hindu or a Buddhist temple, you have to take off your shoes. You have to enter barefoot because it is holy ground. Even the ruined temples, because in Buddhist and Hindu tradition, once a temple is dedicated as a temple, it's always a temple. Even if it's just a slab of rock with a couple of ruined stones around it, it is still a temple. God still dwells there. The reason why you take your shoes off, the reason why you walk in your bare feet into the temple is twofold. One is a sign of respect and submission to God. The other is to sense presence. Holy ground is not a place. Holy ground is presence. Holy ground is where God is. At that moment in the desert, God was in the burning bush. That was holy ground. Not because it was on the top of a mountain where many people believed holy ground was. Not because it was inside a temple. But because God was there. Where God's presence is, there is holy ground. How are we to know that if we don't experience the ground on which we stand? We live in a world today that isolates itself from the world in which we live. We live in hermetically sealed houses. We get into our hermetically sealed cars. We drive to work and many of us work in buildings where you can't even open the windows anymore. We never come in contact with the earth around us. Now, I'm not advocating walking around the streets of Western Michigan in the winter barefoot. But what I am advocating is walking around the streets of Western Michigan in the winter with our souls barefoot. Because many times we isolate our spirits the same way we isolate ourselves. 
For those of us who are a little older, remember when we were young and the snowsuits we used to have to put on in the winter? Those big things where you couldn't even move? Well, there are many of us today who have those same snowsuits around our spirits. No wonder we can't find God. No wonder we can't feel the presence of God. We isolate ourselves. We barricade ourselves behind walls. We insulate ourselves against everything. Not just the environment around us, the people around us, God around us. It's interesting what you discover when you start wandering around barefoot. Like, for example, these tiles are rather cold. When I, one of the places I visited in Sri Lanka was the temple at Kelanaya, which is a suburb of Colombo, the capital. It's one of the biggest temples in, uh, Buddhist temples in all of Sri Lanka, and it's the third or fourth holiest site in all of Buddhism. And I had the privilege of meeting with the, the abbot of the uh, Buddhist monastery there. And just an absolutely fascinating experience. The whole thing is built up on top of a big platform, must be three or four acres, all covered in gravel. Now, walking on this floor is interesting in my stocking feet. But imagine walking across a gravel uh, platform in your bare feet. When you come up the steps to the platform, the first thing you do when you get to the top of the platform is take off your shoes and you pile them in a corner. And believe me, when you finished at the temple, your shoes are still there. And I wandered for several hours through this temple and this complex. And it's a very interesting thing wandering around on gravel. Talk about feeling the presence of God. I was reading, the, I was reading on, a, on the internet this morning, I forget how many nerve endings there are in the soles of your feet. One of the most sensitive areas of our body are the soles of our feet. To stand in the presence of God barefoot is to feel the very presence of God in our lives. Lent is a time for us to take off our spiritual shoes. It's spring, it's, a, it's the church's springtime. It's the time for us to take off our spiritual snowsuits and to begin to feel that presence of God again and to let God in again. How can we know the presence of God if we can't find the presence of God? And we can't find the presence of God if we're all hidden underneath all of this stuff. Lent is a time for us to bear ourselves before God. Today, in a matter of moments, we are going to be celebrating the first of the three scrutinies that are celebrated each year for the catechumens, those who are approaching the church for baptism. They come to us from the ancient church. We are approaching the church for baptism from paganism was a very long process, three, four, five, six, ten years. And the scrutinies were a time when the catechumens were called into the church and the church could scrutinize them. The church could look and see what their progress has been over the time they have been in this period of training. And then to offer God's blessing and prayers for them. That God may protect them from the evils of sin to keep them on their journey to baptism. Now, we'll be calling those up, the, the catechumens up in a few minutes, not for us to examine them, but for them to have the opportunity to examine themselves. This journey of Lent for them is a time for them to take off their old clothes, their old shoes that have kept them from finding God, and to feel under their feet the very presence of God. Sometimes that presence is soft and squishy, like this nice carpet up here. Sometimes the presence of God is hard and cold, like this floor underneath us. Sometimes it's very rocky and bumpy, like that gravel platform that I walked on for two hours in Sri Lanka, and still to this day remember the feeling in my feet. But I would not have understood that if I had not taken off my shoes and let that feeling happen. 